I have a very interesting um, customizer question for you. All right, so just observe, okay? Just try to concentrate. Okay, if I handed this to you and I said, what do you see? Would you say Princess Mononoke? Dr. Seuss, is that you? This is the intro we're doing, okay. Hi guys. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun to talk as a dragon today. I hope that's cool. I chose the worst base because it's gonna be really hard to fit it in the camera, all right. Yeah. I've got a very interesting project today that I'm very excited about and I'll show you the pieces for it. Okay, so here's what we're working with today. Okay, so I am a huge Studio Ghibli fan, Ghibli, Ghibli, whatever you want to call it. If you didn't know, Studio Ghibli is a Japanese studio, a film studio that makes animated uh, shows. And you probably recognize some of them, even if you haven't watched any of them, just from the visuals because it's very popular. Um, an example would be My Neighbor Totoro, a Howl's Moving Castle, Ponyo, especially like that cover photo. I think everyone's seen that at least once. The point is these films are um, amazing. And if you haven't seen any of them, I'm pretty sure they're all available on HBMO Max, or you can just buy uh, CDs. It's so weird to be talking back here. <laughs> I'll just lurk right here, it's cool. Hi guys, Editing Studios here. I just wanted to quickly note that um, this custom was actually made for the Ruffle Feather Studios theme of Ghibli, which is a collaboration account on Instagram. Uh, I only mention because other people of the collab group made customs based off Studio Ghibli, and their customs are amazing. Like Candy Eye Customs made Haku the dragon. It looks so good. Oh my gosh. Um, Cobalt made that little cat from, uh, uh, what is it called? Was it Kiki's Delivery Service? Kiki's Delivery Service. Um, I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head because it's difficult, but everyone made customs from it and it looks so good and everyone did such a good job and ah, oh, yeah, okay. The clap is called Ruffled Feather, bleh, Ruffled Feather Studios. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. Community participates in the events too, so you can always make a custom based off um, the themes we choose and uh, it's just kind of fun collaboration thing but that's all I really wanted to say thank you for listening and I'll go back to editing this monster of a video <laughs> okay I'll break this up so you can kind of understand what I'm thinking yeah this is what I got this is a very expensive Siberian husky base that is never worth the price but I managed to snag this one for pretty cheap I think it was about $20 um, because it was just so damaged um, I obviously acetoned it but it was very it was very damaged and this is just a boring Great Dane base. So what I want to do is I want to um, swap these. I'll use the husky, I'll use this as the head, and this is the body. And that will be um, a wolf character. Princess Mononoke, you know, has wool that she rides, so I thought that would be very cool to do. Um, plus I love this base. Oh my gosh, I love this base. And then Princess Mononoke is where all this comes. Okay, so my idea is kind of complicated. I want to do another stand custom. This is an example of a stand custom, and this one's by Candy Eye Customs on Instagram. I've also made my own stand custom before of Garnet, but she obviously sold, so I don't have her anymore to show you. So for this stand custom, I want Mononoke to be riding the wolf. And this is where it gets complicated because you need something smaller, small enough that it fits on the back in a way that looks good you know i don't know who to do yet i think i need to sculpt the wolf and figure it out it, it's it's between these bases because these are the small spaces i could find that kind of worked i know you guys are probably thinking about her face like you know is she gonna have a beak if i choose this one and the answer is no i want to do she's got a mask so i'm gonna make her with her mask to just eliminate that issue completely. <laughs> Are you ready to be beheaded? There's a very simple way to behead your LPS, and I made a whole tutorial on this, but I just usually throw mine in the oven. Oh my gosh, it's hot. <laughs> Ooh. Watch the magic. The magic. Ow, ow, ow. Ooh. Ooh. Hot. Okay. 
This part you want to be careful with because you can see this neck plug is can move and damage the base. Ow, ow, owie, owie, owie. Hot. Oh, whew. So it looks like the same neck plug here. I want to teach you something interesting. So you can pull out these neck plugs. Ow, hot! Oh my gosh, <laughs> these are so hot. Where's my pliers? Where? Okay, whatever. I'll just use Lupine's old toenail clippers. It's cool. So there's a few variations of neck plug, but if you see the same one like this, you can just replace them in different ones. Like switch it out basically, like this. Ta-da! The more you know, the more you grow a brain. And then we're gonna try to get that in there, but it's probably too cooled down. Oh, maybe not. So if you're wondering what I do with these, I have uh, I have cups full of body parts. <laughs> Let me show you. These are my cups full of body parts, as you can see. Don't worry, this is fake. Don't ask questions, but it's fake. <laughs> it's a failed Irie paint custom, I don't like it. You know, just random uh, chihuahua ears, whatever. So when I get, you know, a few cups full of that, I actually sell it. <laughs> People buy that, it's kind of crazy. I sell it to the customizers who want to use body parts for stuff, or I use it myself. You never know, you know? We got the head swap and we got the base. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this one. The next step is, of course, cutting off all the limbs. I just like building off this base, particularly when I do full body customs. I think it's just a, it's just a perfect base to build off of, which is why I use it. <laughs> Your limbs will not be lost in vain. All right, so now we got something like this. So I'm actually gonna save these feet and I don't know if I'll be using them, like maybe the paws. Um, if I don't use them, I'll throw them in my pile of limbs cup. Oh, by the way, I'm grabbing this with pliers so I don't burn myself. <laughs> Might be useful to know. Heat travels on the wire very quickly, so I can't hold this over a flame without burning myself if I don't use pliers. As rewards for our efforts, we got this majestic creature. So I'm gonna start on the legs. Like I said, I do want him to look like he's running, and even though this does not look like a running pose, it will. Um, I'm kind of worried because animal anatomy is not my strongest suit, but we're gonna try. Like a, like a cool pose here. Like his paws out front like that. Maybe he's like that, you know, and he's like prancing a little bit. Just need to grab some of my flesh colored clay and we'll be on our way. This first pass is just gonna be building up the wire because since this wire is so bendy, when you sculpt right on it, it's really easy to mess it up. So if I just do like a thin layer, exactly the pose I want it, then I can come back and add details later. So that's what we're gonna do. Hi guys! <coughs> it has been probably like two weeks. Um, this has kind of just been sitting on my desk waiting to be loved. Um, unfortunately, I got really busy, so I had to take a step away from this project. I have no idea what I said last. I'm just gonna keep working on the wolf, and I was actually thinking, um, with this particular pose it's in right now, the way it's standing like this, I could actually, uh, keep Princess Mononoke on the ground like this. So it's kind of like stepping over her almost. I feel like it would be very cute, because I'm gonna put them on a stand anyway, so. So right now I'm just gonna focus on finishing up pretty much all the stuff I want on the wolf. Just, uh you know, finishing up the feet and uh, finishing up the tail, fluff, all that good stuff. Got myself a little snack too. Asian pears. My mom bought like at least 20 of them, so <laughs> need to eat them all the time now. All I eat now is Asian pears. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi again. It's been a few days, no biggie. Um, I actually ended up losing my favorite sculpting tool, which is this little bit, and I couldn't work because I couldn't find it anywhere, so I don't know where it went, but I ordered more, and they arrived. So now I can continue the sculpting process. Let's just pretend that the time, I mean, the time skip doesn't really matter because, you know, it just like skip. So we're gonna continue whatever I said. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna start sculpting. All I have right now is, uh, it's like stick figure looking piece of poop. So we're gonna make it look nice. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing on this custom <laughs> excuse me if i sound tired i always am welcome to me oh, also over the garden wall in the background <laughs> um i love that show it's so good anyway um what am i talking about <laughs> um first thing i'm doing is i'm doing like these super cool claws on this wolf because they're like super ferocious um wolves and i feel like they just their their claws are like always really big in the drawing so i just like really wanted to practice doing claws claws are fun to sculpt blah 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 um and then of course a little bit of tail sculpting um it's gonna look really bad that's on purpose just trust me i know what i'm doing kind of no i really i really don't know what i'm doing <laughs> it's a new day it's, it's a, a new start. start so i wanted to mention that uh, certain parts of this, such as, <coughs> such as the, the chest right here and the tail looks bad. This is purposeful. I purposefully left this like this, so just trust me. I know what I'm doing. Um, it looks like, you know, there should be more, more here. This just looks bad altogether. Anyway, I got a really cool idea. I'm very excited to test it out. But we're gonna, this is pretty much done with the sculpting bit. Um, so we're gonna set this aside for later. And we're gonna start on Mononoke herself. Here she is, little bear. So I'm just gonna work on the mask area, the ears. I'm kind of thinking of attaching the ears by hooks to this. It'll all make sense. I know it's gonna look weird. I just have a really cool idea, so just trust the artist. <laughs> um, and of course her little outfit, I don't really remember what it looks like, but I'm gonna look off a picture and I'm just gonna sculpt the mask um, the outfit, the ears. I'm very excited about the mask. I've been sculpted a mask in a while, so. Okay, um, now we're working on the ears. Guys, I'm trying really hard to make this interesting. <laughs> oh, my brain is fried. Oh, gosh. I've been editing this video all day, and if you just, you know, click on the video for a second, you can see that it's, what, 40 minutes long. Um, please help me. <laughs> okay, so what am I even doing? Um, I'm putting on little bracelets. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm just like looking at her outfit and like making a really crappy version of it because it's gonna be covered pretty much anyway so I don't care enough. <laughs> um, and her little necklace of little claws or whatever those are, I have no idea. Oh, <clears throat> Hello, madame. Okay, what are we doing here? Um, ah, the mask. The beautiful pancake right to the face. That's how we start this. And then we uh, start sculpting some beautiful sockets. <laughs> this, is, this is how the creator of the universe um, must have felt like when he was making people. Let's create some eye holes right there, and then we will uh, cut into them with a very sharp scalpel and uh, just carve into their brains a little bit. I'm really trying to be a good talk host here, guys. I'm, I'm, it's not my strong suit right now, you know? I don't have coffee in my system. It's late. So this is the best you're gonna get. <laughs> um, what else are we doing? We are just... Pity to be tappity to be to be tappity with a little brush a uh, bit. I don't actually use sculpting tools, just use my regular tools. I love that mouth, very beautiful. And uh, we're putting little things in so it. So if you're painting something like this, like I'm sorry, if you're sculpting something like this, um, I like to paint it in black. Black has a way of uh, showing all. Well, it sh it helps to see all like the indents. For example, I'd be able to see if I accidentally smudged like a fingerprint somewhere. Um, it's a little hard to tell when it's 
wet like this because it's shiny. Okay, now you can see. See? You can see all the little detail. So now that I can see everything, I think I'm gonna add like some wood cracking type lines. Um, make sure there's no fingerprints. Wow, thank you, Mother Studios, for those gems of knowledge for your little brains that are watching this. Use black paint, everyone. You heard the woman. Um, okay, we're putting the eyeballs in the eyeballs, like you do. <laughs> and uh, more, an eyeball in the mouth. That's pretty gnarly. Um, that's my favorite pointy tool. I love it so much. Um, we're just making little eyes. Looks kind of scary right now. Um, I hope it improves. Oh, that looks a little bit better now that there's black paint on it, yeah. Uh, that's like the little eyebrow thing I was talking about before. This is pretty easy, just layers, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> now we are going to start on the painting process. Um, ignore, again, you know, the like this. This is like a weight thing, weight distribution thing. It's gonna be covered. Again, his this chest and the tail gonna be fixed. Don't worry about it. I got a plan. Um, so let's just go ahead and paint these completely. Make them look nice and pretty. <laughs> okay, and finally we can cover this uh, disgusting sculpting with some paint and hopefully cover up all the mistakes that I don't want you to see. <laughs> um, Mononoke's wolves are white, but you can see I'm using a gray here. That's mainly because I want to dry brush on top of the gray, get some texture in there. I really hate just painting um, a white character completely white. I feel like it's so boring, you know? Um, that just it has no interest. I like seeing shifting colors and values or whatever an artist would say in that regard, but... Um, as you can see, I am dry brushing here. It was actually kind of like not working how I wanted it to, which was kind of annoying. And uh, you'll see later on that I actually end up pretty much turning this completely white. So this was basically just a step I didn't even need to do. So after I painted the wolf for a while, I eventually started on the mask of Mononoke, which was very exciting because the sculpting turned out really good on this mask, so I was super excited to paint this. So I'm starting with a dry brush of white, um, and it's already looking really cool, it brings out all the details. Um, dry brushing is so much fun, especially if there's like little cracks and crevices. Just finishing mixing up her skin tone. Liquid skin, everyone. I know she's bald, like I said, I got a plan. Don't worry about it. I don't know why my brain always makes the skin look way more yellow than it should be. Because this looks like a gross zombie skin. Let me fix that. <laughs> of course, this is a much better color. Blood red. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm the only person that needs to keep on continuously mixing up new skin tones to paint over old skin tones because I just can never get the color perfectly right. Um, I think it's like a tone thing, like a color tone thing. And ladies and gentlemen, you can see now that I am whipping out the old um, airbrush that I bought <laughs> and I'm scared to use because uh, I don't understand how airbrushes work <laughs> and I'm, I'm nervous to use them, but you know, I need the practice. Okay, this is actually my first time ever shading with an airbrush. I got a, like a gray color in here. Um, so let's just see how this goes. I have no idea. I'm gonna test it on the paw, you know? Try to get, ooh, try to. Oh, that's so cool. Anyway, I hate like the flat cut, like just painting it all white is gonna look terrible. So I'm trying to shade it with a darker gray, you know, and just kind of make it look more interesting. So I'm going in with an airbrush here with the gray color, like I said. And my plan was really just to test this out and see how it would look, but the, the gray color ended up being very gray, <laughs> like darker gray than I was expecting. So eventually like I was just kind of making it look splotchy and weird. So at that point I was just like, whatever, I'll just fix it later. <laughs> so I went back over and you can see it's a lot cleaner in this clip because I actually airbrushed white 
on places that it was like way too dark. So it looks really good now, the shading looks good. I just didn't film that part because I thought it was kind of boring. Um, and then I'm going back in with some more gray colors uh, in the ears and just like adding details on the face, making it look super adorable and super wolf-like. I love painting noses like this, like super realistic, like sort of animal noses, it's very fun. I know everyone's been waiting for me to paint the toe beans, so here we go. <laughs> you know, actually, I kind of want a little bit darker. A little bit darker. I was like so excited to paint these toe beans. Ever since I sculpted them, I wanted to paint the toe beans. And uh, there's toe beans on the front paw and the back paw, and that's all the toe beans I got to do. <laughs> and here I am adding some fluff on the side of its face just like adding some dark and then going back in with lighter colors to just kind of make it look um like fur it's just an illusion of fluff um on the sides again white is just kind of boring if it's just a white custom just keeping it completely white so i just want to add some texture and so now we are painting the studio ghibli eyeballs so this was really fun um ghibli has like a very specific style on these wolves and I just kind of looked off a picture and tried to reference it like pretty much to a T is like exactly how I saw it. I was painting it and um, it, it's like a really cool shape, like a sort of almond eye shape. So I was like really okay with going out of lines here. Um, I didn't really worry about where the LPS mold was. I figured it would look good uh, either way. I think it's like really hard for me to like paint out of my comfort zone sometimes. <laughs> like I've never done eyes like this hyper, I don't really know, like I've got a very specific style for eyes I do when you know I don't want to go out of my comfort zone and I was like tempted to do those eyes but this is a Ghibli masterpiece and I need to, I need to reference the original design best I can. So I had no idea like going into this if this would even look good and I was also nervous because I'm painting on top of white paint which means if I mess up I gotta cover the whole thing somehow with um, white paint again but you can see it actually turned out really cool. <coughs> oh. Sorry I work in a dog um, grooming salon and I feel like I inhale so much hair. <coughs> <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> so I would like totally recommend you try painting out of the lines again because even the bottom part kind of like almost looks like the eyelid or like almost like a baggy eye. Um, anyway, uh, wow, my voice is like butchered. It's from all this hair I'm ingesting. <coughs> anyway, and that pretty much concludes the wolf painting portion. I mean, it was pretty simple. I wanted to do as much as I could with the white, and then we're going on to the Mononoke mask, starting with the ears, just painting them a lovely shade of blood red. I'm actually going back in with a darker red, I'm trying to get a dark color in all those creases, because I'm so excited to dry brush this area, make it look super uh, uh, interesting and and uh, realistic dry brushing is so much fun. It's like my favorite thing to do. Um, I do it with almost all my customs in some way to make it look amazing and it's like effortless, effortlessly flawless beauty. <laughs> um, I love making masks. I haven't made very many uh, LPS masks on customs, but from the ones I have made, I've always like really liked them. It's really fun. Um, kind of makes me want to like try making jewelry or something, like sculpting like you know, Mononoke mask, making it like earrings or like something cool like that, like a necklace or something. Cause like, it's so much fun to like sculpt hyper realistically like this. The design of the mask is pretty simple. I don't have to worry about too much more color. Just um, this kind of like interesting orangish brown sort of eye paint around the sockets of the eye. I don't really know what those are. Little eyeball holes. Um, I painted the inside of those black, obviously, to kind of give the illusion of um, depth in there and um then i go back with this sort of gray color for the little eyebrow piece i'm starting with gray because it's like the darker color and then i'll go back with like some white highlights make it look beautiful um dry brush like i always do i love dry brushing um it was a little tricky to dry brush this mask and not get it on the skin tone okay i know what you're always thinking how are you ever gonna get both of these on frame to take pictures? No. <laughs> okay, no, not that. I know what you guys are thinking besides that. Well, I was thinking that because I just noticed that it's so hard to get these in frame. 
<laughs> anyway, sorry if I seem too crazy. Um, it is early morning. I just drank coffee. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you know. If you drink coffee, okay. I know what what the other, what uh, I know what else you're thinking. Um, Mother Studios. This looks great and all, but you know, Princess Mononoke, do we look a little bald? <laughs> like always, I have the answers. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm really excited about this, um, I'm going to be using, for the first time ever on a little patch up custom, this faux fur. Boo so, um, I have never, ever attempted to use faux fur on a custom. So I was thinking to put some on this one's chest, um, its stomach area, definitely its tail, that's why its tail looks like crap. I want its tail to be like big floofy tail. Um, and then Mononoke. It's gonna be like her carp, like her, I think it's, I think it's a, is it probably a wolf carpet on her back? Which is kind of morbid considering she, um, loves and lives with the wolves, but, um, <laughs> anyway, ignore the, uh, heavy breathing in the background. Um, that's my dog. <laughs> I'm not out of breath or anything, or I don't have, like, a demon in my room, don't worry. I'm gonna be using faux fur um, to make it look pretty. I've never done this before. I hope it works. I can't do it right this second. Of course, this doesn't affect you at all. I'm going to work in 20 minutes, 20-ish minutes. Um, so I can't start this project. I'm gonna start this project either after work, if I get back at, like, a reasonable time, or I'm going to start it tomorrow. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be one second to you, but it's, you know, I'm gonna work on this later, okay. I'm back. <laughs> Give me the energy I had this morning. We're back and we're gonna try to do this idea of mine. Um, I got some super glue here and, uh, you know, I got hair, so I'm just gonna try to use these two things and see if I can make the magic. Now, I was initially thinking of uh, cutting straight from this bottom piece. You can kind of see that it's all the hair is connected to this like bottom strip of fabric. So I was just going to like cut off from this bottom strip, glue it on to here, and then cut what's left over. But now that I'm kind of like seeing how long this is and how much space is on the cusp, like I don't know, maybe I should just cut the hair off directly and then glue it on like that you know maybe that might look better yep i'm just gonna i'm just gonna wing it you know what we're just gonna we're just gonna wing it <laughs> i'm gonna start from the bottom and then keep layering like a bunch of hairy hair um wish me luck i don't know how this is gonna turn out mm, i'm also drinking hot cocoa <laughs> Okay, I kid you not, this was the most irritating thing I've ever done. Um, you would think that glue like this would stick instantly, but the hair was just not sticking to it. It was sticking to pretty much everything but this uh, LPS, which was super annoying, including my hands, and it was just not working. I could have. I. I. <sighs> This is entirely too much hair. I mean, look at my fingers. Oh my gosh. The worst part is the glue isn't exactly working the way I thought it would, which is weird because it's super glue. I mean, it sticks so well to things. Apparently, besides the one thing I want it to stick to. So that's great. Let's hope this works. I think I was mostly irritated because nobody told me I was getting a hairy manicure today. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, I'm about 10 minutes into this and we've reached some problems. My hands are hairy. Um, the glue, I don't know why, it's just not working. Ugh. It's just not binding with the plastic like I want it to. Like, I'm gonna rip this off. I'm gonna try to rip this off. Yeah. Oh. So, ugh. this is like a whole 
nightmare. Oh my gosh, hair everywhere. Oh, okay, I have an idea. I feel like the glue just really needs something to bind to. I don't know why it's not sticking to the plastic, but it's really not working. So I think I'm gonna do a layer of um, uh, tissue where I want the, the hair to stick. And then I'll try again and hopefully this time uh, it'll work better, so. Oh, hi, what's up? It's the next morning. <laughs> I uh, rage quit last night. That's basically what happened. Um, I had hair all over my hands and glue, so that made me mad. <laughs> and the glue wasn't sticking, so um, I, uh, this is actually tissue paper. Hopefully the glue sticks to this better, but it kind of looks, um, it feels rock hard. Wow, what? Like an actual rock. What? Okay, I have no idea if it's gonna stick to the glue any better, but we're gonna try. <laughs> um, this time I got some gloves, some uh, throwable gloves. Since I don't wanna get glue all over my hands again, I learned my lesson. <laughs> okay, this time I'm going to focus on the uh, hairline here around the mask, try to make that look nice. There's still hair stuck to this, oh my gosh. Um. And that's the basic. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hopefully pray <laughs> that it sticks. Okay. We're gonna do a little bit at a time. <laughs> this glue has hair all over it. That's fun. <laughs> I'm also gonna use less glue. Maybe it'll dry quicker. I don't know. Okay. Here goes nothing. Yeah, like, how am I supposed to make a clean line like this? Hmm. Oh, and it's not sticking very well again. Dang. What's with this glue? It's super glue. Come on. I hate my glue. I went down, I raided what I could find, and uh, I found Flex Glue. It says, um, Instant Grab. Very, uh, effective. And this one says bonds virtually vir bonds virtually everything. So <laughs> if these don't work, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> now I did read the warning, so don't worry. I've got safety glasses. I didn't read anything about fumes. That one's not open, so I'm actually gonna try the other one first. And uh hopefully it'll work. Oh my gosh, it's not sticking. It's not sticking! What am I doing wrong? Why isn't glue working? What is this like? Bonds virtually everything. What am I supposed to do? Okay, 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 okay. Let's try the other glue. Let's, Let's try, try the other glue. glue! This better be worth it. All this pain and suffering that I'm going through right now. You'd think that glue would um, do the one primary function that it was built for. I've got like a personal vendetta with this now. <laughs> oh my gosh! <sighs> Getting glue on my sticky fingers again, and I'm worried about like pressing it into the mask and like making that look ugly on accident. And it's not sticking! It's not sticking! Why isn't this working? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have an aneurysm. What am I meant to do? What am I meant to do? That didn't work either. Either. Nothing works. Okay, I'm gonna have to big brain this off camera for a bit. <laughs> I'll be back. So I had to think about how to cope with this problem. Um, you know, I lost all my sanity at this point. Um, it's not my fault. That's that is the takeaway here is what happens next it has nothing to do with my decision making because technically i was so uh angry that i could just not even make a rational choice at this point so you don't know me i'm by the side i'm just the old Seems like dreams might be worth a try. So I say, let it be. Find me 
truth. I'm saying it's the kind of growth. And that's not us, I suppose. We should let it grow. Let it grow, let it grow. You can't be what you don't know. There's the inside the earth. Just one way to live a fruit. That's how they don't want to be hurt. We should let it grow. It's really nice. Hi, it's the next day. I'm glad that circus crap is over with because I finally got them nice and hairy. This reminds me of like a little troll. <laughs> Sing and kill my grandma, okay? Oh my gosh, I love it. Anyway, um, the missing link was Mod Podge. Mod Podge? I always get it confused. Mod Podge or Mod Pod or Mod Podge. Help. I needed something to get like all the hair sticking to itself, to each other, because I had to cut the hairs. I had to cut the hairs to get the hair to stick to the to the custom, but the hairs weren't sticking to each other, so it was losing a lot of hair. So the Mod Podge I used to clump the hair together to stick to the custom that built the house that Beth lived in. This was a whole ordeal, and it was painful, and it's finally almost over with. <laughs> but now I have to do the fun part, which is kind of like trimming down everything I did here. So this is Mononoke. This is little Mononoke. She's very hairy. And then this is the wolf. Again, I'm trimming it right now so it looks like a disaster because um, it's not trimmed. And I'm also hoping that I don't mess this up because I do not want to redo that hair bit if I accidentally like cut too much off. Daphne's barking. Would you believe me if I told you Daphne's barking in a closet in a tiny gap of clothes like in between like a gap so it's like muffled, but she's like sticking her head and embarking. Now I can live out my dreams of, well, my non-existent dreams of becoming a hairdresser because I can't cut hair. Um, I'm using these like children's uh, scissors because, you know, they're just what I have. Those other ones in the background are garbage. Don't let them fool you. Um, <laughs> they don't cut hair for crap. And I'll tell you what, I was inhaling. I already have so much hair in my throat for my job, but... <coughs> From this portion, like, I just remember hair was flying everywhere and there was nothing I could really do to not inhale it. So I was kind of just becoming, slowly becoming a cat when, you know, cats like hack up hairballs all the time. That's kind of what I was doing this whole time. Um, so, but of course, you know, I muted it for you. Of course, you don't have to listen to that. Um, but that is just the illusion that, um, in this video that it was all easy, but it wasn't. I was suffering. I was suffering, and I hope it was worth it. <laughs> My throat is ruined from this experience, and I don't know if I'll ever recover. <laughs> um, but holy moly, it was really fun to cut this anyway. Um, I really didn't, I didn't uh, swallow that much hair, so don't worry about that. It was just kind of a joke. Okay, so I just finished snipping up their little haircuts. This is what this one looks like. And then Mononoke. I really like Mononoke. Oh my gosh, she's like exploding with little hair. <laughs> However, I did probably lose about 10 years of my life with the amount of hair I just inhaled. <laughs> so these guys are now done, but I'm not done yet because I want to make them a little stand. I don't think I'm going to do anything too crazy, just grass. Um, and then I think now that I have them the hair on, I think I wanted them to be set up like this. So I'm gonna draw like an outline and just start working on that. So I really didn't film that much of this process of making the stand, uh, just because, I mean, this video is already really long, of course. <laughs> um, and I don't really wanna waste your time with this portion. It's probably kind of boring. I don't know if this is boring. Um, so I start with a little paper and then I cut around it with my craft scissors, my children's safety scissors. Safety is important. Um, and then I kind of just like squish some clay on top of there, make it nice and squishy, like a pancake, a flesh, a flesh colored pancake as it is. And uh, I'm just kind of like making things even, making them look pretty. Um, I did a lot of sculpting off camera, obviously later on. Um, I didn't want to, you know, 
film all of it. I was kind of like running out of storage at my camera at this point anyway, so I couldn't film all of it, even if I wanted to. Um, so I got like their indents of their feet where they're gonna stand. I just did that by like pressing them into it. And then I start with a black base coat, like always, because of course I'm gonna dry brush this and make it look super natural, natural all these uh, colors. I love to go back over like paintings like this in um, a wash and this time I chose brown and some black. It kind of just like brings everything together, makes it look uh, completely finished, very cool. Um, sometimes I get too much color on and then I dab it off with a tissue, um, but I would very recommend trying dry brushing washes. It's so much fun, makes your work look amazing. Um, you don't even have to try very hard. <laughs> All things that are A++ in my book. Um, and this is just some glue I'm going over with that I was going to glue some rocks on later, but I don't have the footage of that, unfortunately. So I hope the results are satisfactory. Um, these are very fun to make. I was like super excited about the results. Um, this was like quite the journey, <laughs> the emotional roller coaster, especially with the hair. Oh my gosh! Um, and these just took so long. Holy moly! <laughs> they are sold, by the way. I'm sorry about that. I don't. I actually sell them pretty much right away. Uh, most of my customs I sell right away on my Instagram, right when I post them. And this video is coming out. Um, pretty later after I posted these, uh, but they are sold. They're so beautiful and I love them and they're going to a lovely home and I'm so happy about that. Thank you so much for supporting me and my hobby. What? <laughs> these uh, pictures are kind of blurry. I'm sorry about that. I really wanted to get good quality ones, but Instagram ruins the quality, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. If you watched the whole video through, I'm very impressed, this is so long, holy moly. <laughs> you should definitely comment and tell me if you did so because that's pretty awesome of you to do. I really appreciate you. And with that being said, I'm going to go hack up a hairball. Good day to you. Um, enjoy not having glue, hairy gluey fingers.